I've been seeing a lot of fucked up ass shit out here about uh, Jackson State not doing enough to retain Coach Prime Deion Sanders. And the shit's so fucking frustrating because it's a lot of prominent people saying this shit. And then you got the average man and woman saying it and it just shows from top to bottom a lot of us don't really fucking understand the plight of our people in this bitch. Because, I mean, it's very simple. We ain't got the fucking money. We don't have it. Instagram is not a real fucking place, people. Facebook is not a real fucking place. People are capping. You see these folks taking these trips. And you see these folks posting these pictures and uh, 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 rocking red bottoms for prom or when they go out for date night and all this shit. You see these folks buying these cars, rocking these clothes. Folks are capping. Folks are putting shit on their credit cards. They ain't got no business doing. Folks are goddamn uh, uh, spending their last to get them lashes and then that weed and them nails done and them clothes. Folks are uh, saving and saving and saving to take them damn trips or they're pooling their money together. We ain't got it. We ain't got it. So, so this narrative that Jackson State University didn't do enough to keep Coach Prime is bullshit. Bullshit. Now I'm gonna talk about it. If I need y'all hit that subscribe button. Fuck with me now. If you're a real one, fuck with me. If you if you're uh, uh, on that bullshit, get the fuck on. Y'all real ones. Y'all fuck with me. Hit that subscribe button and put all your people on it. Because these are the real reasons that JSU or fucking any HBCU will be hard-pressed to pay a coach like one of these Power 5 schools do. These are the reasons. Number one is systemic racial discrimination. Number two is we are severely outnumbered in this country. And number three, Too few of our entertainers and our ball players are connected to black schools. Again, racial discrimination that's been systemic, it's historic, it's ongoing to this day. That's number one. Two, we are severely outnumbered in this bitch. And three. The folks that they have allowed to get money. When you think of industries and you think black people uh, being the number one in the industry or something like that, you don't think about tech. You don't think about the educational system. You don't think about healthcare. You don't think about the legal system. You don't think about politics. You think about sports and entertainment. And too few of them have ties to black schools. And nobody want to fucking acknowledge none of this shit. Just want to say, y'all ain't doing no. Where, where, where was your counter offer? Like them motherfuckers would have been able to match what these folks offering. And, and, I ain't just talking. I did a video about this before. When people doing all that talking about uh, uh, Jackson State moving up to a uh, Power 5 conference. Remember that? Say, hey, that's If y'all missed my video about we believe the bullshit. That's one of the things. Remember all that talk was like, who might move up to a group of five school or, or, or conference or or maybe some people talking big. Go to the Big Ten. All that shit. Remember that? And I pointed out, we ain't, we ain't got the money for that shit. Not just Jack State. Not just the swag. Yeah, black people in general ain't got that money. And I showed the data to back that up. And I'll show it again. Maybe people are listening now because it's tied directly to this whole 
Coach Prime leave and shit. Maybe people will pay attention now. But I'll show it again. Let's look at it. Now, let's start here. Now, damn near all of what I'm showing y'all is featured in a very short video called The Racial Wealth Gap Explained. I strongly encourage you to go watch that. 20 goddamn minutes. You can spell that, okay? You can spell that. If you're willing to read, though, go read the 1619 Project. All right, that's the book that got all these motherfuckers in the, in the frenzy passing all these anti CRT laws and bullshit like that. Go read that book, okay, if you're willing to. But if you're not, watch the racial wealth gap explain. And we need to start right here. This is where it starts. We don't think about shit like this when we posting why Jack State ain't doing it. Oh, that's a broke school and all this shit. We ain't thinking about this. Going all it, it don't, the way things are today, this, it just didn't get like that just overnight. It goes all the way back to 1619. Look at that. 1619, 1865. That's slavery. Now people say, oh, slavery over. Y'all say, motherfucker, that's a hell of a um uh, head start that other groups in this country got. But it didn't stop there. You see that from 1865 to 1968. Basically, legal discrimination. And I guess they count 1968 with the passage of the Fair Housing Act. I guess that's the watershed moment where I guess segregation officially ended. But it didn't stop there. Continued discrimination has gone on since then. The war on drugs and mass incarceration, they defunding this and doing all this kind of fuck shit. Ain't nothing stopped. All of that has led to this. Look at what you see there. For white folks, if you look at savings plus assets minus their debts, $171,000 on average. This is from 2016 data. Hundred seventy-one thousand dollars compared to compared to black people, savings plus assets minus debts, seventeen thousand six hundred motherfucking dollars. Why Jackson State ain't giving more money? Why they ain't do a parade for? <laughs> Why you ain't pool your money together? Pool what? Pool what? Let's keep going. Again, it's 2016 data. Graphic after graphic show the same shit. Oh, look at that another way. Unemployment rates by race. Black folks, historically in this country, last to get hired, first to get fired. And an unemployment rate, but you motherfuckers are gonna say, well, black folks need to stop being so lazy. The unemployment rate does not even count motherfuckers who aren't looking for employment. It counts people who can't find, who are actively looking for a job and can't find it. All of this shit is why HBCUs in general can't afford to pay no goddamn coach $5 million a year like that. Home ownership. See, one of the things that the documentary talk about is that's one of the main things black people, not just black people, all Americans do to grow their wealth is in your home. That you buy a home and hopefully the, the uh, property value goes up over time. But take a look at that. Subprime mortgages. These were... <laughs> Fucked up ass mortgages without a fixed interest rate. That you might come in on that thing when you first get the loan with a lower interest rate, but over time they go jack that interest rate up on your motherfucking ass. And look who was targeted for it. They got documentaries out here about that. How they would some of them, some banks call them ghetto loans. Ain't that a bitch? They went to black churches, and some pastors thought it was going to be a good thing. Some pastors thought, I'm going to be helping my parishioners, my, my congregants to get homes. 
And they end up with these fucked up ass mortgages. Look at this one. High rate of mortgages among borrowers with good credit. Because see, over here, somebody might say, well, black folks ain't, ain't keeping their credit good. You know all the jokes. White folks got good credit. Black folks got bad credit. Even for black folks with good credit, they were getting these fucked up bad loans. Look at the rates of college graduation. And I see motherfuckers talking about, oh, uh, uh, only 13% of folks, uh, uh, graduates, uh, donating and shit like that. Compared to, shit, we ain't got as many graduates. I'm going to get to how the fact we just outnumbered in the first place. But even being outnumbered, a lower percentage of us go and graduate from college to have these good paying jobs to be able to give back to a university. And even then, if you graduate, how many of y'all graduate? And you might be first generation or second generation, whatever the case may be. But you one of the few in your family that went and graduated. So you got the good middle class job and you had to try to help motherfuckers in your family. Or you got young and maybe you're a mentor like me and you got folks come to you for money. A lot of shit in my cash app is giving money away. And I be, and I be thinking sometimes, well, damn. I wonder if they, got, they ain't got nobody in their family that can give them that. But they come to me. I know a lot of y'all go through that. We say a lot of people outside don't understand that for, for black people. A lot of times when you are that college graduate, you got to go help others in your family, in your circle. Let alone try to give some money to help a guy to retain a fucking football coach. Look at that shit. Look at that median wealth. Look at that. This, this is from 2013. Okay, that figure come from 2013. You got white families well over 100,000. Black families right there, what? 1,300. What the fuck we supposed to be pooling together, dog? Huh? What we supposed to be pooling together? Look at this shit. The economic state of black America, $220 billion. Annual wage gap between black and white Americans. Annual wage gap, $220 billion motherfucking dollars. For black owned businesses, those are entrepreneurs like me that's out here trying to get it. $1.6 trillion revenue gap between us and them. But why y'all ain't doing more? Where was your counter offer? And this is that first figure I showed you just in another form. Look at that gap. See, Instagram got some of us thinking that this shit ain't like this. Somebody took a little crew. Oh, they popping. Oh, they getting that money. Some people think I'm already rich. Can you see how many shirts we selling? Or they see the fact that I'm able to get on here so much. No, the fuck I'm not. It's hard as fuck being an entrepreneur. It's hard as fuck being a, a, a graduate of a college. And, and, and I'm second generation graduate of college. My mama graduated from college. But she was the first. And then she chose to be a teacher. What the fuck you, what she, she was supposed to try to go be a Fortune 500 motherfucker coming out of school in the 70s? Black woman in America. Taught 40 years. Most important job in the world. Should have been rich. Not in America, Jack. A lot of families like mine. What the fuck we got to pull together, dog? What are we talking about? What the fuck are we talking about? I think people really don't be thinking when they be saying this shit. People want to be Alabama and Ohio State and Michigan and all this shit so bad they forget that we face challenges that them motherfuckers don't. We face challenges that Colorado does not. 
There's a reason why Colorado doesn't have the crime that Jackson does, Coach Prime. It's a reason why the air is cleaner in Colorado than it is in Jackson, Mississippi, whatever your assistant's name is. All that shit I showed you contributes to that. So when motherfuckers get to talking about why Jack State ain't do this, why Jack State ain't do that, goddamn we ain't got it. Why the Jackson business community ain't do do this? Why first of all, the, the, the uh the hotel, the restaurant, all that shit on the outskirts of town. That's where the folks were staying. Them owned by white Republicans. Them motherfuckers ain't giving a damn about what's about trying to keep no damn Deion Sanders. Now these motherfuckers don't want the black people that got here, let alone his ass. Who who being here to help the black school? Maybe if he was at Mississippi State or Ole Miss. But to help the black school, why the fuck would they do? They already systematically underfund the school. So then you turn to the black businessmen and women. A lot of them did pull their money together to try to up money for the assistance and try to help Coach Prime. They did write stuff into his contract to give him some of the uh, uh, money from the gate. But with all those efforts, they were not going to match no damn Colorado. It just weren't. And all that shit I just showed y'all is part of the reason. The second reason. We are vastly outnumbered in this country. I think some people get caught up in that little bubble because in this country we, 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 we still segregated. We ain't segregated by law anymore, but we still segregated. And I think people really think there's way more black people in this bitch than it is. And I know this in part because I'm I live here in Mississippi and, and, and I, I now in one of my businesses, I travel throughout the state of Mississippi, Mississippi, excuse me, and, and I and I teach. Okay. Oh, uh, but even when I was in the classroom with my kid, they used to be shocked every year to learn that black people make up only 12 to 13% of this country. That's it. That is it. 12 to 13% of the country. There ain't a lot of us. I mean, you line up 100 Americans. Okay? If I could just get a good sample of America and say, for this example, I'm going to get line up 100 people to represent America. Of that 100, I would only need about 12 or 13 people. And that's black people in America. So when we severely outnumber like that, of course, our black schools going to be much smaller than the white school. Colorado, collectively, if you count all of their campuses, got 66,226 people. If you just count the Boulder campus, Okay, and I think this is the figure that Coach Prime was counting. Just the Boulder campus got 36,430 people. That's the students. Let me stop saying people. That's the students. In contrast, Jackson State got anywhere between seven and 10,000 kids. Roughly, based on all the different sites I'm looking at. They got 36,000 motherfuckers Jack State got anywhere between seven and ten thousand. University of Colorado got four hundred eighty thousand alumni. Four hundred eighty thousand, most of them white. So then, those figures I just showed you, showing the uh, extreme wealth disparity, applies to those people. Why didn't Jack State do more? The fuck they supposed to do? Lastly, like I said, the one, the two industries that black people been allowed to rise up in in this fucked up ass country has been entertainment and sports. And when you think about our sports figures of the day, 
We think from the past during segregation, those sports figures that popped, uh, the bags weren't like they are now. So now that the bag is there and these these schools are fully integrated, the folks with the bag for real, for real, don't they don't come out of no HBCU. So when they're giving back, they're not giving back to HBCU. Not primarily. They might do it as a donation, but they ain't no booster. We need some black billionaire and millionaire boosters. And many of them. See, go Brian say, I talked to, uh, what do you say, seven, eight, nine, ten, I don't know, a whole bunch of powerful boosters. These ain't no thousand L's. These ain't no upper middle class guys. He, that man was talking to millionaires and billionaires probably. Most definitely millionaires with surplus money, play money. They treat them schools like they're franchises. And they can just play. But those people who could do that for us that come out of these industries don't have the ties. Michael Jordan went to North Carolina. So he gives back to North Carolina. LeBron James ain't go to nobody's school. Don't now we see him doing some things for fam you, but I, I hope he becomes a booster. Shit, I hope he sent his son to Jack State and become a booster. But I mean, he, he doesn't have a college to call his own. He can make one of the HBCUs at. That would add to his legacy. Steph Curry went to Davidson. So I'm sure he gives back to Davidson. Kevin Durant spent like six months at Texas. He goes down there and shows his face. I'm sure he probably gets some money. Serena Williams. I think she went to some art institute or something like that, but it went to HBCU. So these sports figures we have don't have those ties. And so now they don't become boosters. Go to entertainment. Jay-Z, billionaire. He ain't go to no school. He's a high school dropout. Beyonce, his wife, one of the greatest entertainers of all time. She ain't go to no school. Kanye West, used to be a billionaire, but still got a lot of money. Brags about being a college dropout. You know what I'm saying? That's just the name of few. If you watch the game, you watch the NFL today, as I tell you, I'm going to take them on the floor. If you watch the NFL, you saw a bunch of black men there. The most of them didn't go to black schools, so they don't become boosters for their schools. You feel me? That's part of the problem. But see, then another problem is this too. Too few of our athletes, entertainers, actually retain the money that they get. If they did, the documentary like broke would not exist. Statistics like two thirds of them go broke would not exist. Talk about the athletes right now. How they gonna give back if they blow what they get? How they gonna become a booster at Jack State and Grambling and Southern and Mississippi Valley State and all these places if they didn't blow the money? Don't bullshit largely. Or you take oh uh, the rappers and the singers. A lot of them don't understand contracts and shit. Time at a time, you see them bag them uh, getting pissed off. They don't own their masters. They don't mean they don't own their music. They don't own the official rights to their music. Now these motherfuckers be capping. Wearing all these chains and shit and ain't really got no money. See, a motherfucker like Nipsey Hussle understood the game. He wasn't as famous, but he understood ownership. So he actually had some money. Didn't have no ties, no school, though. Now you might say he's from the West Coast, but again, coming out of that world, well, they don't have those ties or they ain't thinking like that. Damn, maybe I can go own a sports team, but you can slick somewhat be like an owner of a College team, that's what boosters do. Those are probably old white men out there in Colorado, those are Coach Prime's bosses. 
If they want that AD gone, he going to be gone. They want Cole Prime gone, he going to be gone. And they will buy him out of that contract. They don't give a damn. They do it all the time. Got to throw away money. I think I just read some say that the, the, the uh, uh, AD ain't even came up with the money yet, but he ain't worried about that. He know it's coming. But our folk don't have that. Like, again, you got these rappers and these singers getting to these fucked up ass contracts. Really don't need these folks. Social media area. You can put your shit out yourself, retain your stuff, tour, be a business person. But they ain't thinking like that. They think it's artists. And don't really get no real money. You know, like I said, the athletes be blowing it. So all this shit, man, put together is the real reason why you got HBCUs in general can't compete with these motherfuckers with this money. So we got to stop saying, well, well, why they ain't doing enough to do this? Why? And let's try to fix some of the shit I talked about. Let's try to fix some of the shit I talked about. We got to throw our political support behind candidates who truly want to solve the problem. And that is systemic racial discrimination. We will, our people were once viewed as property. We once had a dollar value on us. And then after that, they have systematically kept us from getting some money. We must recognize that. And now that we have the franchise, we got the right to vote. Use that right to vote to select candidates in the primary elections as well as general elections. That supports shit like reparations for slavery and segregation. Don't let these motherfuckers just tell you slavery was so long ago. That's ancient history. Okay, what about segregation, motherfucker? If we're going to use 1968 as the year that segregation officially ended, then God damn. That's just... That's right there. My, my sister was born in 1970. My mama turned 21 years old in, in 1968. That means my mom spent her whole childhood as an unfree person. Needs a reparation for all that shit. Come on, man. If we're going fix to fix this shit, we got to instill financial literacy in our athletes and entertainers. Once we realize that this child is going somewhere, we realize it early, they got fucking rankings for fourth, fifth, sixth graders and shit on the AAU circuit. Once we realize these kids are, are, are great, we got folks out here making all these YouTube channels for their little talented baby and shit like that. They be singing and dancing and stuff like that. Once we realize these kids about to be some in one of these industries that these white folks gonna let us uh, 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 flourish in, we gotta instill them with some financial literacy. And if we're gonna do that, that means we gotta be financially literate. Maybe we got to work on ourselves as the adults. So when they get the money, they know what the fuck to do with the money. How to retain the money. How to flip the money and get more money. If we want to be able to uh, 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 just throw away money on the football coach. That's what it is because really football don't fucking matter. At the end of that shit, don't matter. So if we want to be able to throw away money to do that, we got to teach these motherfuckers how to not only get that money, but keep that money. We got to teach them that. If we're going to solve the problem, we must instill a sense of Black solidarity and pride in, in being black and being for black people and for black causes in our athletes and entertainers. We are their first supporters. We are, because they look like us. They come from our hoods. 
we're their first supporter. Quite often, we're their first teachers and coaches. But then they go play at Kentucky for six months, and then they John Calipari at the draft with them. Spend six months with them. They go play for Nick Saban. Never have a, a, a long conversation with Nick Saban. They learn how to play from the black position coach. Now he grinning and shit. Like he didn't put him in the league. We are the ones. We're the first supporters. We are the biggest supporters. When they fuck up or they're perceived to have fuck up, we are the one that still be standing by. You still can't tell some folk that O.J. Simpson ain't killed that woman to this day. You still got black folk out here goddamn supporting Kanye West bitch ass. That King Kyrie, young blood, he fucked up posting that shit. He still had us riding for him. Vic fighting them dogs. Still had black folk. Ray Lewis caught that case. Still had black folk. We are the biggest supporters and we usually stay down. And we're going to solve the problem. We can't turn away help from black people or any real one outside of the community. Just like if a player played for a PWI, but see, they want to get their money, she got to embrace that. Because holy I see, just, if you're just going to embrace those who went to HBCUs on the undergraduate level, I just showed you we're severely outnumbered, and we, we graduate from school at a lower percentage, that's going to be a very small group of people that you're going to try to pull some money from them and say let's compete with these big uh, uh, schools. That ain't gonna work. That ain't feasible. So if you get a real one who maybe went to a PWI, I got a youngin right now who at Mississippi State, but he loves our people. He, he, he wants to help black people. Yes, he's at Mississippi State. He went to all black schools his whole life. He wanted uh, um to see what that uh, uh, side of life is like. Kind of like the decision I made. But he loves his people. He wants to help his people. You telling me if that kid turns out to get some big money and want to be a booster, write big checks, you going to turn that money down? No, you can't do that. They got to be a real one. My young and a real one. I think somebody like Kyrie has that in him. He spent six months at Duke, but it seems like he is trying to find himself in this in this space where he's becoming more aware and more conscious of being a black man in America and what the fuck that has meant. I can see a Kyrie if, 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 if we, or somebody like him, you can get him to be a booster. Again, not just all these, like, did he pledge to do the million dollars in Ja Rule. No, I'm talking about booster consistently giving big money so and therefore becoming a, a person with an opinion becoming a power player and choosing ad and all that we gotta do that because we can't sit up here and say in a city that's had an ongoing water crisis god damn it i ain't worked i taught in Jackson, on Lynch Street. I want to say that was 2010, 2011, 2009, 2010, something like that, around there. We had water crisis then, goddamn pipes burst. We were out of school. There's a little bitty Catholic school on Lynch Street, okay, called Sister of Bowman. Some of y'all drove past, like, Brian ain't paying no attention. I taught them where the water crisis is. So you're telling me a fucking city that can't fix their damn water problem was supposed to be able to pony up all the money needed to keep the football coach. 
Well, God damn it, obviously, if they had the money to, to, to give to the football coach, hell, they wouldn't have a water problem. Come on, man. Systemic racial discrimination being severely outnumbered in this country and having those of us that go get the bag not having those ties to these black schools in terms of becoming boosters. It's the real reason that HBCUs can't match these PWIs currently. I say currently because if we do the things I'm talking about, put our political weight behind candidates that want reparations and steal financial literacy in our kids, all our kids, but especially the ones who are in route to go get this money and steal a sense, sense excuse me, of black solidarity and black pride and an intention about helping your people. Because see, we see now that Coach Prime went out there and switched up the story now. Now he ain't just about helping his people. He don't want to just provoke. God ain't, God called me to Jackson, Mississippi to provoke change. It ain't just that now. Now it's, I got to build a rainbow coalition. I understand that because you need to help all people. But like I said in another video, as a teacher and coach, you, you got to give more attention to the ones that's struggling than you do the ones that, that, are, that are not. And I'm showing clearly that we are the people that come from struggle in this bitch. So we have to instill this sense in our people who getting that money that you got to tend to your own first. That don't mean fuck everybody else. That don't mean if you can't, uh, don't donate to St. Jude to help whoever may need help. That don't mean uh, there's a disaster uh, in a white community and don't give to that. That does not mean none of that shit. That means, though, your constant, what you, what your norm is to be about your fucking people. And not just the ones that play ball for you or with you. Being about your people in general. And until we get all that shit to happen, we ain't gonna come close to be able to match that play. Which is, again, part of the reason why so many are disappointed that Coach Prime left. Because unlike any other coach in the sway, on the football side of things, I'll just say. Because I don't know what most money looking like. At least on the football side, to my knowledge. Cole Prime was already the only one I already felt the risk. And could have said, man, fuck y'all, I don't need your money. But it was business and he wanted more money. And we just couldn't match that. So let's just leave it at that. And don't denigrate the efforts of those uh, connected to Jack State. Especially those who always giving. Like the 1400 Club. Shout out to those Kings again. I did a shout out before, but shout like my brother Thaddeus Reed, man. That man come from a single parent. His mama was a professor at Jack State University. My sister professor at Jack State University. So you hear professor, that don't mean she fucking rich. Severely underpaid to be a professor. She didn't get a doctorate degree. My brother Thad's mama had a doctorate degree and was a professor up there. He come from a middle class household in North Jackson. Now he's in the upper middle class, doing well, consistently gives. So to try to say folks like him and his crew and stuff like that ain't doing enough. When they doing what they can, man, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. Fucked up. Jack State always leading in attendance. And look at all the shit I just showed you about how black people don't have as much. So. 
you would think our, our attendance would be much lower. Right? Because we don't really have the surplus funds for travel and to be paying for, for game tickets and for parking and all that shit. But we still do it. So to say that, that the Jack State community ain't done enough, man, that, that's a fucking slap in the face. It just is, bro. It is. What the fuck we supposed to do? Try to convince Brendan Renner to, to, to give him some pussy? That we supposed to try to do? And I don't want to disparage that sister like she just throwing her pussy around like that. I'm just, I'm just being facetious. What I'm saying is, what the fuck were we supposed to? Folks, really, I hear talking. We should have thrown, uh, given them a parade. What the fuck that was gonna do compared to five million dollars a year? He got a mural. He got adoration from black people. That motherfucker, that uh, who is Swat came on here and all them thousand thousand people riding with him. What you want us to do? Colors of the school, blue and white with an accent of red. These motherfuckers let them come in there and do whatever they want to with the uniform. What the fuck y'all want us to do? I've seen some reports that say the salary was up to a million dollars. When you total everything up. What you want folks to do? And yes, that was tremendous that he gave some of that money uh, of his salary to try to help shit. He could. So folks saying, what other coach doing that? Them other swag coaches can't afford to do that. And then the coaches at these other schools don't have to do that because they got so many rich people. Most of the time, the coach Brown was on Jack State campus. He was the richest motherfucker in the room. I dated Colorado. He not the, always the richest motherfucker in the room. Come on, man. Stop that bullshit. If we're going to talk about it, let's talk about the real shit that needs to be fixed. Let's work together to fix it. Put it on some. Thank you so much for watching my daddy's YouTube channel. Make sure you like, share, and turn on your post notifications. Okay, how do I do it?